Hey folks, JD here, and today we've got this. This is the Hominy, and it is an indoor quadcopter, but it also has little sensors around the quad, so you can control it with your hand, gesture controlled, but you can also, I, I think it might double up as like almost like a, a very basic um, obstacle avoidance. So let's open this up and have a little look inside. So let's have a little look. So we got quite a bit inside here. So let me just clear the boxes away there. So there's the quadcopter. There's the transmitter. You also get a little bag of accessories, which we'll come back to in a bit. And you also get the instruction manual as well. Now then, let's have a little look at this particular quadcopter. So this is it. And the first thing I notice is that it doesn't feel, the plastic doesn't feel as thick as other quads. It doesn't, yeah, it feels a little bit, a little bit thinner. It doesn't feel as, as rigid. Um, I'm well let's let's see what it's like you don't want a quad to be too rigid but it certainly does stand out with this that it is very very flimsy it, feel, it certainly feels that as well it feels as if you know you can oh, that's the power button but you can depress quite a lot of different parts let's see how it flies I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world right then so let's start at the front as you as always so we have our little orientation LED right there working our way towards the middle we have our on and off button we have our four brushed motors sitting uh, two, at the, two at the front sitting in between the, the, the power button or sitting either side of the power button rather then we have this sort of nice little decorative piece at the back there and then we have our two back brushed motors here as well these motors are your standard sort of small tin can motors they're nothing too uh, too hot or heavy inside there you can find them all over the place uh, should you need to replace them I imagine there's going to be a little bit of soldering on the on the PCB if you were to take this off and if you were to replace them uh, but you do have options there so the quad can actually last you a little while if you are like me going to fly this quite a lot inside the house now i did speak about this gesture contr control and you'll see them either side here you'll see one there uh you'll see one the other other side there as well and you've got two here or one here rather can't quite make that out maybe two definitely one uh on that side yeah two i think and uh, essentially as you have your hand if you hold your hand like this you should then be able to push the quadcopter up, move it to the left, move it to the right. Uh, same as we saw on a quadcopter about a year ago. I think it was about this time last year when I had the other one on here. And um, all in all, I'm hoping that this is going to react in the same way. Now we have a little battery inside there and it's held in with a little screw right there as well. So just to take the battery out, just lift that screw and then the casing comes off and then the battery's inside there so the battery itself should give you about eight minutes of flight and should charge within about 45 now as for the charging ports on here i'm guessing it's going to be directly at the back maybe not i'll have to have a little look i think maybe the way that you would do it what, what do they give you in the way of charger so they give you ah usb yeah okay so you and they give you a screwdriver so that's exactly how you should do so the quad cop that doesn't plug in but the screw does come off and the battery does come out and then plug directly into the usb charger so that's exactly how they want you to charge it a lot some of these do come with a little little port at the back little socket that you plug the uh, you plug the you plug the plug into and uh, you can charge it up via that this isn't one of those but that's okay that's neither here nor there you can replace the motor uh, the the the, the, the um, propellers as well the, the the quad propellers just by taking off this little this little um thing here uh, cover and then you can get at the propellers so as for a weight let's have a little look and see we are looking flying weight of this particular quad is 31 grams so very very light indeed right then let's leave the quad look at all this plastic not a fan of all this plastic let's look at this transmitter transmitter is very basic very quite nice as you would imagine with anything let's start off on some of the buttons so we have our speed control here auto takeoff auto landing you have your two trim buttons this side you have headless mode and you have your other trim buttons here as well so trim for up and down trim for left and right on the top you have two shoulder buttons you have one here for interactive sensing switch and you also have another one for flips and rolls as you hit the flips and rolls you hit it once and then move the right directional and that then will allow you to 3d flip and 3d roll you also have altitude hold with this quadcopter it does have a barometer so therefore this analog stick is going back into the center if we turn this round you have a little screw you have to take off so let me just do that quickly and then it should be triple a's i'm guessing three triple a batteries inside this maybe and then that then should give you what you need to power this this transmitter does not allow usb charging so you have yeah there we are three triple a's so you have got to make sure the batteries that you install are fully charged or shop bought so i'm going to install mine right now ready for that and i'm going to do an indoor flight very very soon so there's that 
And then you have, let's put those two there, even though it's going to be out of focus, but still. And then you have your bag of accessories, which gives you a spare battery. It gives you two extra propellers and it gives you your USB charging cable. So that is pretty much everything that you need to get up and running and start flying. So right then, next thing I'm going to do, my friends, charge the battery and then we're going to take her for a flight. All right then, folks, let's get this underway. So I charged both the batteries. We were looking at about an hour for both, well, about an hour, hour and ten for both of the, well, for a single battery to charge. So about two hours and twenty for both, approximately. So what I'm going to do is just attach this in here. There is one little annoyance factor with this, uh, and that is once everything is connected, there we go, you have to, you can't leave the battery just in there like that. You have got to screw the back back on. There we go. So the back goes on there, and that goes in there. So what we're going to do, first of all, as I'm just doing this, I'm going to try first and fly it without the transmitter. Now apparently you can fly it with hand. I want to see what it's like and I want to see if it's viable for indoors. It might not be, and that's fine if it's not, uh, especially in a living room which is as small as mine, but at the same time we can give that a go and see how it goes. God, this is quite fiddly. There we go, that's in. That's going to be safe. That's not coming undone. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, good. So, first of all, what it says is just to put it on the floor and turn it on. And then the LED should change flashing style. So it flashed very quick to begin with. Now it's a cup, three flashes, then off, three flashes, then off. Now that should mean, going from the manual, that the quadcopter is now calibrated. So I have to hand throw it. If I hand throw it, it should start, and then I should be able to push it. Oh, it might not be very viable for indoors, this. <laughs> because I don't want this to... I don't want this to... There we go. It does... It records your... Your hand movements for quite a while afterwards. So... You've got to be careful with it. Oh, that's so. Oh, 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 lights, lights, lights. Come down, little man. No, you're stuck. Oh, now you're going in towards the TV. This could end disastrously. Cards are on the floor. It's Armageddon, folks. Okay. So, there we go, behind the TV. That's how not to fly it indoors. <laughs> Straight away, that's it. You need to have a bit more room, I think, for that. I'm going to try that outdoors when the weather dies, uh, dies down and see exactly how successful that is. So what I'm going to do now is switch onto the transmitter and hope him for a better flight. So, like usual, at least we know it's possible. At least those sensors work. And you have got a, a sensor on and off switch here. So hopefully we can put that to use. Single one up, one down to bind. LEDs are solid. Calibration, both in. And once you've done that, you calibrate it. Single key takeoff. No, it's got to start the motors first. Come on. Click and hold, maybe. No. Come on. That's that one. That's all the manual said. And then click. No. No. Usually, is it just one of them instead? No, that's okay. Stop calibrating the gyro. We know that calibrates. Usually, it's both out for nearly all quadcopters. And that starts. I wonder whether, now it's bound, whether I've still got a hand throw it. So let's see. I shouldn't imagine so, because it has got a one-key takeoff button, but that's not seeming to do anything at all. And there's no other button that I've forgotten. No, it's just inductive switch, which you click and hold. No, and then click and hold it again, and it goes back onto transmitter. Okay, let's try. Oh, okay, hand throwing it does the job. Okay, so what happens once I've hand thrown it and used it with the transmitter? I wonder if I can take it back up with this one key takeoff. No, I can't. Okay, kind of makes the one key takeoff a little bit moot then, if that is the only way that you can you can fly it. It's just by hand launching it. It does a good job, but there's not really a need for that one key takeoff button if if that is the only way. And as you just saw, there is not another way that I that I can figure out anyway to get that up. We'll we'll have a little try on the second battery. I'm just conscious that I don't want this to be 
uh, constantly chewed up with me trying to have it to take off when a hand launch will do the job. So, movements. Let's have a look. Barometer. Moving a little bit. Let's try trimming it a little way. Trimming it. Let's just try a couple of this. It's making a little bit of a difference. Not a lot though. Trim it forward a little bit. Find a nice sweet spot, which is usually quite difficult indoors. There we are. Hear the motors change sound then. Ah, that's about as good as I think. I'm, ha you know, I'm happy with that. I think that's great. I don't think that's anything to worry about there at all. I think that's pretty good. So, okay. Movements, quite nice. Flips and rolls. Flips forward, no problem. Flips back, no problem. And of course, I'm going to take it down a little bit because I'm conscious of the light fitting there. Okay, four-way directional flipping. Ooh, let's give you a bit more altitude there, little fella. Not much. And I'm going to try the fourth way, which is off to the left. Off to the right, rather. There we go. So four-way directional flipping. Forward, back, left, and right. And once you click it, you transmit the beeps. So you know that you have that enabled. I wonder if you can disable it. Yes, you can. You click it again, and then you disable it. So click it once, you beep, you're in, you're in 3D flip mode. Click it again, and it stops beeping, and you're now out of 3D, 3D flip mode. That's pretty cool. Okay, high and low speed. So two beeps, speed mode two. Moves okay. It's not as nice as the Potensec, the A20. That was lovely to fly indoors. This feels a little bit more rigid in its flight. It's not as fluid. The corners don't seem to be as nice, doesn't seem to be as comfy in flight. You know, it's performing little little movements quite nicely. I can, you know, I can spiral. You know, it, it's, it just doesn't seem to be as fluid as I'd like. But still, it's a cheap little toy, you know. For, for the fun factor and to be able to fly indoors when the weather is bad, it works. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, in three speed modes, the motors are quite loud, that's why I had to hold the transmitter up to my head then, just because, wow, straight away, as with any third speed mode, the turning is on a sixpence, you know, it really is. It, the, although, when it does turn, it wobbles. There's definite wobbling when it's turning, even with the oar and roll, and even on its own. And then back into speed mode one, which is a lot more gentle. Oh, where are you going? You're going upstairs. There you are. Where are you going? Come on in. This way. There you go. Lost track of it then. Right, turn around and let's go back. But yeah, it's all right. You know, it's okay. It's, it's a nice little fun quad. As you can see, those... Um, those, motor, those, pro, those propeller guards do a pretty good job. They just stop it from, you know, spiraling out of control when uh, when you hit the wall. When the, motor, when, the, when, when the propeller arms hit the wall. At least that way it's not hitting, hitting the propeller directly and it's not going to damage it. Although, it could be trimmed a bit better. So I'm just going to try and see if I can... Oh, that's the battery. There's your LEDs flashing. So that is your... And both of them flash as well. Yeah, there we are. There's a bit of a correction on the unboxing. I said the first LED on the front was um, orientation. It's not. The orientation are on top. Okay, let's wonky landing. And let's land that. There we are. Cool. Now then, let's switch this off. Let's turn that off. That's not too terrible, you know. That's not too shabby. Where's that gone? That's rolled all over the place, that has. There we go. Perfect. So, let's... Oh, this is a real fiddly job. That's... The, the there we go. That's better. The uh, the screw itself hasn't got a very it's not a very deep cross uh, cross cut to it. It's not deep Phillips cut. So that's quite hot. Motors are very hot, but all four of them are very hot. Now, obviously, in between battery changes, you should be leaving it best part of ten minutes, just so that the the motors can cool down. I'm not going to do that with this. I'm going to just take it straight back up pretty much. Go on, get in there, you fiddly little thing. 
you've got the, the cable under there is pushing the, the plastic, the thin plastic one side and won't let it bite properly. And then of course it doesn't help with my chunky fingers. There you go, go on. Little, slow and steady. There you go. Oh, no. This, this really is a, a fiddly job. I mean, I, it probably wouldn't have cost them anything more to put a, uh, oh, come on. Wouldn't have cost them any more to put a little hinge on that, you know. Would have saved them a little bit and I do find that really fiddly. At least another battery works because my finger just turned it on. There we go. As you probably saw, that was just pushed in. <laughs> Come on in. Uh. Why aren't you starting then, little guy? One flash. No, one flash and that's it. Let's have a look. I haven't nicked the cable. The battery is certainly the new one. Yeah, that's the old one, that's warm. So let's try that again then. Because it did come on when I accidentally pushed the button when I was putting the, the battery B door back on. No. No. Okay. There's nothing in there that's been snagged. No, everything in there is nice. Doesn't look to be any issue there. Printed circuit board is fine. That all looks to be good. Okay. And then let's uh, try and see now if I can put that back in and see whether we can get this back up. I doubt it's going to work. I don't know why. Maybe when I put the screw in, maybe I... Uh, Maybe I hit something with the screwdriver, perhaps. Let's try again. Let's see how far we get with it. So far, it's really fiddly, that is. Good God, that's a fiddly job. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why that was taking so long to turn on then. Because it there was a little flash. Almost as if there was a there was a lost connection. Single one up and one down to bind again. This is going to be facing the wrong way and I still can't. Have I got to keep my finger on the one key? Take off? No. Let's try again. Calibrate the gyros. If I hold them in. Let's try a couple of different ways. See if I can start these motors. Well that's every single combination that I know. And there's no pushing on the analog sticks to turn it on. Let's click and hold the one key take off in case it takes like three or four seconds. No, nothing. Okay. What if I turn off the sensing switch at the top? No, then I think, because that's flashing, maybe it doesn't use that anymore. Okay, let's see. Let's just hand launch it then and see how far we go. Up we go. Right, so if I click on the sensing switch, it's, that's really quite difficult to do so. Now, I can still control it using the transmitter, but I can control it using my hand as well. So I bring it back. There we are. And it might be a little bit easier to do it this way because you won't have it then going behind your TV. <laughs> there we are. It drops out to do it a little way, and I don't know whether that is because it is whether that is because it's a little bit awkward. Uh, sorry, if it's misreading because I've had the heating on. Heating is off now. The house isn't particularly hot, to be honest. It's not particularly warm, it's not particularly cold. But there we go, at least that works. And then if I click and hold, turn that off, that button is really stiff. Then nothing happens. Okay? So in order to do it, you've got to click and hold and then the LED on the transmitter will flash and then you can push it. Ooh. It's just a bit of added fun. I mean, you could have somebody standing over there. I could then just go and hit it towards you. You then can bat it back. Fun for probably about, I don't know, six seconds. But 
you know what? It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? But yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's not nowhere near in the realms of being the best indoor flyer. But uh, I've not heard of this manufacturer before, and I like to give everything a shot. And um, yeah, it's actually all right, you know. It's okay. It's not too bad. It 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 feels speed mode three feels a little bit unstable when you go to fly, as I've showed in the first half of the video. Um, very quick, but it also seems very, I don't know, very unstable in turning, whether it's your and roll or whether it's just flying and then your, you know, it just seems a little bit too unsteady on some of the turns, whereas speed mode one and speed mode two just seem nicely weighted, nicely balanced. Um, the quad is a slow mover, but it's a fun mover in speed mode one. I think I prefer the Potentic, though the A20, over this. I think I do. This is okay, but the Potentic was fun because its cornering was just, for its size, its cornering was very, very, very good. This is fun, but you see, it's. I think this one's gimmick is most certainly its, um, its hand gesturing. I wonder what if we can use that as obstacle avoidance as well. So if I click and hold this on, if I just let it go towards the wall. No, it's not batting itself away. So, that could be because it's stuck to the wall. <laughs> but it could be. There we are. Oh, stop little man. There we go. Oh, there we are. Fine, that's what I wanted to do. I thought if I kept holding it, it would hopefully um, disconnect itself, but it didn't. But there we go. I mean, it is fun, but that's about as far as it goes. It's, it's, the, it's not obstacle avoidance. It is just hand gesturing. And, and that is, that's okay, you know. You know, that's not terrible at all. It's just, I think for me, I'd rather the Potensic, which was a little bit more sporty, a little bit more racy. It seemed a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit nicer. This one now is, I don't know, it's okay, it's okay, but it, it, you know, it's not, it's not wonderful. I wonder, let's try a couple more flips with it. You know, this has got flips over the Potensic. The Potensic did not have flips, but at the same time, you've got to have the space in order to do it. And now she is dropping in altitude slightly. So, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to land her. I think, uh, there we go. Using the one key landing, and she's down and she's off. She's fun, but she's not as fun as the Potensic. I think that's exactly what, I'm, what, what I would say. Uh, I, I, I would leave it for the Potensic any day. Uh, the Potensic is a lot cheaper than this, or it is cheaper than this, and it was, it was actually a lot more fun than this as well. Uh, this was okay, it was okay. I mean, every part of this, though, is just screaming. The motors are burning hot. The battery is burning hot. You know, whereas the Potensic, the motors were warm, the battery was warm, but it wasn't hot, hot. You know, these are. And there's, okay, I've had a little crash behind the TV, I had a little crash over here, there. You know, but at the same time, that's... Yeah, see, they're very warm. Very warm. But you know what? It is a fun little cop. If you've already got it, don't think it's a bad cop. They're not at all. It's just, I think, I would prefer the Potensic over this. I think this is a bit of fun, but I think that's about as far as it goes, really. But uh, yeah, there we go. All right then, my friends. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.